section number six, we will talk about upgrades, specifically upgrading cluster nodes and the virtual machines. This section has three lessons. We will start by talking about how to upgrade your virtual infrastructure, what's involved in that. Then we go and talk to specifically about the cluster nodes. You'll see some pretty cool features in Windows Server 2019 there that helps you with that. And finally, what's involved when you upgrade your virtual machines. We will start by talking about how to upgrade your virtual infrastructure, what's involved in that. Windows Server upgrades, as with any infrastructure upgrade, has really three phases. And those are the ones that we'll focus on as objectives of this lesson. What to do before the upgrade, pre-upgrade, what to do during the upgrade, and what to do afterwards. Let's start with the pre-upgrade. First, there's some analysis that you have to do where you're starting from. We're talking about in-place upgrade paths. Now, a lot of Windows system administrators don't really like in-place upgrades, but there's a lot of benefits to that when you consider that you maintain your hardware. Windows Server 2019 has a very limited upgrade path from prior versions. If you've been around Windows Server for a long time, you know there's a very similar story here. Basically, if you are coming from Windows Server 2012 R2 or 2016, you have a direct upgrade path. Otherwise, you will have to do one or two upgrades before you get to Windows Server 2019. First step, the planning aspect. Now for Hyper-V, it is pretty straightforward. Planning involves moving the virtual machines somewhere else. If it's a standalone machine and you're doing an in-place upgrade, you'll need to maybe do a backup and restore. We'll talk a little about that in a few minutes. But bottom line for planning for standalone Hyper-V host is no different than any other Windows Server host. So you have to do things like, when are you going to do it? Do you need a maintenance window? How critical is the server? Who's using the server? And what's running on the server? In your case, we're looking at Hyper-V. So which VMs are running on it and who are the application owners or the virtual machine owners that need to be advised? Additionally, you will want to make sure that your backups are happening on that Hyper-V host. If you are coming from Windows Server 2012 R2 or 2016, what were you deploying on the Hyper-V server? If you have any software-defined networking or software-defined storage, those are key elements to consider as part of the planning aspects. Not a lot more to talk about in terms of planning, so let's get to the upgrade. So failover clustering and VM upgrades, we'll cover these in the subsequent lessons in this section. But for in-place upgrades for Hyper-V, yes, it is possible, but as I mentioned, the only thing that you have to be aware of is where do you place the VMs during the upgrade process? That's where shared nothing live migration works really well. You can move it to another Hyper-V host and go ahead and do the upgrade process. Once you've actually gone through the upgrade process, then you log into the server, validate the event viewer, restore the VMs, and ask the users to log into the VMs to make sure that everything is healthy. It's a very short lesson. Essentially, Hyper-V in-place upgrades are possible. The only thing to keep in mind is for the virtual machines, move them to another Hyper-V host using something like shared nothing live migration or back them up and put them on another host while you do the upgrade and then you can move them back afterwards. 